Hi everyone, welcome to rotational motion, or known as angular motion. This is probably the hardest topic in all of mechanics for physics. So let's start getting into this. This is broken up into sections. The first section is kinematics. So it's going to be very sim similar to linear kinematics, but just kind of different words and it's things rotating instead of going linearly. So try to do things on your own first, but I will go along as we do. A ball starts at rest and it rotates to the other side in 4 seconds. If it reaches the other side with an angular velocity of 1.57 radians per second, what was the average angular velocity in this time period? So remember, what we're doing is this ball is rotating to the other side like that in 4 seconds. So let's write down everything that we know. We know angular initial velocity is 0. We know time it takes 4 seconds. We know final angular velocity is 1.57 radians per second. And this is a little tricky, but we should know from here to here, we know what the angular displacement is. Okay, the angular displacement in radians, we know all the way around is 2 pi. So half the way around is going to be equal to pi radians. Okay. One thing I just want to say is, I know this looks like a bunch of mumbo jumbo, especially when you do it at the beginning, but it's the same thing as kinematics. You know, instead of omega, it's V initial. Instead of omega final, it's V final. Instead of uh, change in um, theta, it's change in X or displacement. So it's all the same thing. Now we want to use the same formula. Okay, so for example, we know average velocity is equal to displacement over time, right? So same thing, average uh, angular velocity, omega, is equal to not change in x, but change in theta over time. It's the same thing. Uh, so change in theta is just pi, radians is 4 seconds. What do we get? Pi divided by 4, 0.785. So 0 0.785 radians per second. Okay, what is the what is the angular acceleration? Okay, so now same thing we're doing here. Angular acceleration. So instead of acceleration, we're looking for alpha, angular acceleration. Again, we know all these pieces of information. So let's try to see, okay, what do we know? We And we should know that, okay, acceleration is equal to V final minus V initial over T, right? So now all we have to do is, okay, let's just change this out. What we know is angular acceleration is equal to angular velocity final minus angular velocity initial over time same thing so now we get angular acceleration omega final is 1.57 initial angular is zero and then time is four seconds okay and then what do we get 1.57 and we get 0.39 radians per second squared okay so I know people get really tripped up and it kind of messes with their mind, but it's pretty much the same thing. And don't take it for more than that. Now we're just rotating instead of going linearly, but it's, it works the same way. So just try to keep that in mind, not get so confused with this or not get so overwhelmed, I should say. All right. A four meter long bar starts from rest and rotates five revolutions. Okay, so it goes five times one, two, three, four, five. Okay, that was unnecessary. Five revolutions with a constant angular acceleration of 30 radians per second squared. How long did it take to make five revolutions? All right, let's try this. So what do we know? It makes five revolutions. Okay, so we know one time around is 2 pi. So if it goes five times around, that means it's going to be equal to 10 pi. So this is a little bit different because I know in displacements where you started, where you ended, with angular displacement, oh, with angular uh yeah, angular displacement or <laughs> change in theta, we're going to just uh, do the total of everything. Okay, and we know the angular acceleration alpha is equal to 30 radians per second squared. Um, and we know it's a four meter long bar. Oh, interesting. Okay, so we know that this is four meters. Okay, how long did it take to make five or starts from rest? So we also know omega initial is equal to zero. Okay. And now we're looking for time. Again, same kind of formulas. Everything just now angular. So the change in theta is equal to omega initial t plus one half alpha t squared. Okay, this should be very familiar. Displacement is equal to v initial t plus one half a t squared. Okay, just the angular version. So 10 pi is equal to zero plus one half 30 t 
squared. Okay, so now let's start putting this into our calculator. 10 pi divided by 15, square root of that. And now I get t is equal to 1.45 seconds. Okay, what was the angular velocity after rotating five times? So now, what, what is this asking for? We want to know what the final velocity is, final angular velocity. So now that we know the time, let's see if we can do this in a simple way. So we should know omega final is equal to omega initial plus alpha t. It's going to be 0 plus alpha 30 times t, 1.45 point. And then this is going to give us... 43.42 radians per second. 43.42 radians per second. Okay. Again, it's the same thing as how it was linear. Now things are just rotating. So just try not to overcomplicate it. Okay. All right. A four meter long bar starts from rest. Okay. So again, four meter long bar. Maybe I should just underline things first. Four meter long bar. Starts from rest with the angular velocity of 40 radians per second, omega initial, okay? And decelerates with a, at a constant rate. It stops rotating after 20 rotating. It stops, okay? How fast is the edge of the bar moving initially in meters per second? Okay, this is a little bit different now. Okay, so we want to know, so this is rotating at the beginning with an angular velocity of... 40 radians per second at the very beginning. We know it's slowing down. However, we want to find out how fast is the tip of this going? Because what we should know, what we should know from uniform circular motion is, it, even though this is rotating at a certain rate, all the rate is the same angularly, linearly it's different. It's going a lot slower over here and a lot faster at the tip, okay? Because it covers more ground in the same amount of time. So even though the angular velocity is the same everywhere on this, it's going to be going faster linearly the further it is from the radius of rotation. All right, so let's try to do this. We know it's first moving at an angular velocity of 40 radians per second. And then we also know that the radius is equal to 4 meters. So what we should know now is if we want to find the linear velocity, that's going to be equal to the angular velocity times the radius. And this should make sense because even though it all rotates at the same speed, the further out it goes, the faster it's going. So the further the radius is, the bigger the velocity is. So this is going to be equal to 40 times 4, and we get 160 meters per second. Okay, so that's how fast it's going at this tip right at the beginning. Okay, part B, what was the angular acceleration of the bar? Okay. Now we got to kind of start over a little bit. So we know angular is zero at the beginning. Um, we know it comes to a stop. V five, oh, no, it's not, it's not zero, it's 40. 40 radians per second. We know it comes to a stop, zero. We know it stops rotating after 20 revolutions. So 20 revolutions is equal to 40 pi. Okay, because one revolution is two pi. So two times 20 is 40 pi. How fast, okay, and now we're looking for what was the angular acceleration, okay. angular acceleration. So, now let's look at this formula, omega final is equal to squared plus two alpha change in theta. Okay, so we get zero is equal to 40 squared plus two alpha 40 pi. Um, this is my calculator, 40 squared, bring that to the other side. Two divided by 40 pi. One thing is when you're putting things in your calculator, um, make sure whenever you're using the pi button to to uh, put it in parentheses, okay? Because if you don't put it in parentheses, it's going to take it as a numerator every time, okay? So make sure whenever you're doing this to put that pi into parentheses as you do things, okay? Oh, sorry, yeah. and that should be negative. So what's happening, why it's negative is it's rotating counterclockwise, which is a positive motion, right? So we call every, everything rotating counterclockwise, we call it positive. And so since it's rotating this way, but it's slowing down, that means the acceleration is going the other way. 
And if it's accelerating the other way, that means, and which is clockwise, that means it's going to be negative. Okay. And that's just how we do it with math and physics. We usually call counterclockwise uh, positive and clockwise negative. So how far did the middle point of the bar travel? Oh, interesting. How far did the middle point of the bar travel? Okay, so we're looking for how far did this middle point travel? So remember how we did this velocity is equal to omega times r? It's the same thing. So we want to know how far this middle part traveled, right? And what we should know is the middle part is not going to travel as much as the end part. It goes, the end goes a lot further in the same amount of time. Okay, so this middle part isn't going to travel as much as the, as the further part. And the closer you go, the less it's going to travel. So at the, if, if you're right at the radius, no matter how many times you spin, this part doesn't move at all. Okay, but we want to now find what, how much does this middle part travel. So it's the same thing. What we're going to do is we're going to say that the distance traveled is equal to the change in theta times r. Okay, so the change in theta times r. So how many times it rotates times the radius of this. Okay, because the further out it goes, the more the distance traveled. So we know it rotates is d is equal to going to be change in theta, which is equal to 40 pi times the radius, which we can find is 2 meters. <coughs> so now we can see that this is equal to 80 pi or 80 pi is equal to 251.3 meters 251.3 meters okay. oops all right um let me just put that down in my notes real quick All right, let's look at the next problem. A grinding wheel starts at rest, starts at rest and accelerates uniformly for 10 seconds and reaches maximum speed of 25 radians per second. The wheel runs for another 37 seconds and then shuts off. The wheel decelerates uniformly at 1.5 radians per second squared until the wheel stops. What is the time travel interval uh, that it takes the wheel to slow down? Oh shoot, I have the answer here, right? <laughs> interval that it takes to the wheel to slow down. So let's just put down everything we know, okay? We know mega initial equals zero, and then it goes, it accelerates for 10 seconds and it reaches its maximum speed, 25 radians per second, and then it shuts off. While it shuts off, the wheel decelerates, the angle accelerates negative 1.5 radians per second squared, and it comes to a stop, zero. What is the time of that it takes the wheel to slow down? It takes the wheel to slow down. What is the time interval that it takes the wheel to slow down? Okay, interesting. So I guess it wants to find out how long it takes to go from this point when it's shut down till it turns off. Okay, so we know it speeds up to 25. So then this initial uh, angular velocity is going to be 25 radians per second. And then it's going to slow down at a rate of negative 1.5 radians per second squared. And then it's going to turn off. Uh, and then it's not going to move at all. So we want to know how long this takes. So the, the time for this. Okay. So actually a lot of this information is not necessary. So we know that alpha is equal to omega final minus omega initial over t. Again, we should be looking at our formula and seeing, okay, which one has all of these? So alpha and we know is negative 1.5, omega final is 0, minus 25, and time is what we're looking for. Uh, so now let's put this into our calculator. I'm going to do 25 divided by 1.5, and I get that 16.7, or simplifies to 17 seconds. Yeah. There's a lot of information here, so make sure that, because a lot of it also wasn't necessary, so make sure you get what's necessary for this problem. All right, uh, finishing off with this one for this video. A rigid body rotates about a fixed axis. Uh, so this body here is rotating around this fixed axis. This is the fixed axis. All the points in the body must have the same tangential speed, angular acceleration, tangential acceleration, linear displacement, centripetal acceleration. Okay, so it's not gonna have all, all points of the body. So that means every single point 
wherever you look, something is going to be the same here. And what we should know is nothing tangential or linear is going to be the same. Okay? Because, again, it's going to move more the further it's in the end, and it's not going to move as much the closer it is to the radius. Because over here, it's just going to move like this every time it goes around. This one's going to move a huge amount every time it goes around. Mm -hmm. So anything tangential, the tangential speed will be a lot more here, a lot less here. Uh, tangential acceleration, same thing. Linear, same thing. Uh, centripetal acceleration. So remember, centripetal acceleration is equal to v squared over r, v tan squared. So it is. it also matters about how fast it's going tangentially. So it's not also going to be that. What it is going to be is angular acceleration. So how fast it's rotating angularly. So the angular velocity is going to be the same at all points. The angular displacement is going to be the same at all points. And the angular acceleration is going to be the same at all points, okay? Because it's all rotating at the same exact rate, okay? No matter where you are, it's all rotating at the exact same rate. All right, guys, thanks for watching.